Hi, my name's Paul Thomas, and I'd like to welcome you to the very first transport vlog YouTube video. Now, I'm based in Sydney, and I'm currently at Stanmore in the Inner West, and behind me is the main line from Redfern to Strathfield, probably one of the busiest lines in the whole of Australia. Now, as the name suggests, this channel is going to be about all modes of transport, hence the name Transport Vlog. That's an Oscar train that's just behind me here. That's going away from Sydney towards Strathfield. Those trains tend to do more of the longer distance uh, outer suburban services. So up to places like Gosford, Newcastle, and out to uh, uh, some of the places in the Blue Mountains as well. Okay, anyway, back on track. So um, as I say, we're gonna cover all modes of transport, but there's gonna be quite a heavy focus on trains and Sydney Metro, um, because that's what I'm most interested in. And, um, but I'm also gonna cover ferries and buses and road transport and a little bit of air transport as well. Now, Sydney Metro is going to be quite a big part of this channel because that's the main construction project that's happening at the moment. It's the biggest public transport project in Australia. The first section between Talawong and Chatswood is already open. It's October 2020 as I record this video, and that section has been open now for about a year and three months. So I'll be spending a lot of time on that uh, line. I'll be doing a uh, a view from the cab because it's driverless train so I can do that visiting the stations really talking about the project the benefits and some of the technology and the engineering behind that as well and then I'll be uh, spending a lot of time on the sections under construction so that's called the city and southwest section so that goes from Chatswood it's going to go uh, through North Sydney uh, under the harbour under the harbour and then out at Barangaroo then through the CBD it's then going to come out at Sydenham and it's going to take over the Bankstown branch of an existing Sydney trains line and that's due to open in 2024 so there's a lot of work going on at the moment a lot of uh, work on the stations construction work so I'll be visiting the stations and uh, giving you updates on how that's working um, how it's all going also visiting a couple of very interesting spots uh, chats with dive site that's where the metro is going to go underground and also at Sydenham where the metro comes back up so very interesting to see what's happening at those stations and the track layer and how that's going to change as well so I'll be regularly going to those uh, places and giving you updates on that now besides Sydney Metro uh, City and South West there's also the Parramatta Metro now that uh, is I think pretty much been approved that's going to go from Parramatta to the the city the CBD that's going to relieve pressure off this this line actually um, the Sydney trains line and there's also talk of other metros now out to the new Western Sydney Airport at Badgerys Creek of course that's another topic that I'll cover as well as that's developing um, so yeah so Sydney Metro the other lines I mean there's, there's so much going on at the moment uh, with that which is really really exciting times actually in Sydney now besides Sydney Metro there's also quite a lot of other things happening this is going to include the replacement of the intercity fleet so these are the VSET trains that uh, currently run to Newcastle and to the Blue Mountains so they're going to be replaced with the NIF trains that's the new intercity fleet they're currently in test mode at the moment and I can't wait to get on one and to share what that's like with you and besides replacing the V-sets on the Newcastle and Blue Mountains lines, the NIF trains are also going to replace the Oscar trains on the Wollongong line, which will free up more Oscar trains for the suburban services in Sydney. Now there's also plans to replace the regional trains as well. So these are the XPTs and the Explorer trains. These are the ones that run to regional New South Wales and also interstate over to Victoria and into Queensland. So the plan is to replace those in 2023 with new bimodal trains. So these are trains that can run on the electric overhead wire system and also a diesel as well. Now, as I mentioned, it's not just going to be about trains. There's quite a lot that is happening uh, with Sydney ferries at the moment. This includes the refurbishment of the First Fleet ferries. These are the really iconic Sydney ferries. And uh, a couple of them have been refurbished already, and I'll very soon be showing you what the new refurbished ferries are like. Um, also, there's talk at the moment about how we're going to replace the uh, Manly ferries. Uh, again, they're very iconic as well. A bit of con controversy about um, maybe replacing those with the new Emerald ferries. Um, so I'll be covering that as well and it'll be interesting to get your views on what you think of, of what, what's going to replace the Manly Ferries so that's going to be interesting to cover as well. The ferry system is growing, it's becoming more and more popular so I'm sure there'll be new, uh, new services coming in and I'll be covering that as well. Okay we have an Explorer train just coming behind me now, there we go. That one's heading away from Sydney so that would be going to somewhere like Canberra probably and we've also got something else behind me now this is another Waratah train now as you can see this line is pretty busy this is a Saturday afternoon 
so an off-peak time at the moment and there's another one coming now this is one of the se the uh, second series this is one of the newer Waratah trains they're distinguishable by having the orange fronts hopefully you'll see the back of this one in a moment yeah you can see the orange fronts the the first series ones all have yellow fronts so that's how you can identify those uh, the Waratah train is the most common suburban train in Sydney at the moment there's uh, I think there's almost a hundred sets of them now so uh, they're, they're pretty much the bread and butter of the off-peak service now I can hear a plane above me which uh, leads me on to air transport so at the moment it's October 2020 we're right in the middle of the uh, COVID-19 coronavirus pandemic so there's not a lot flying out of Sydney Airport at the moment but I am on the flight path there's planes taking off I'm hearing about one every 10 minutes at the moment that one seems to be quite a long way from from me or oh, I can hear it a bit now Let's see if I can spot what it is not from here anyway um, but I love to travel by air and I'm hoping in 2021 I can get back to uh, air travel again um, it Sydney Airport is quite interesting at the moment so I will do a video there or close by and we'll see what is actually flying in at the moment I mean at the moment uh, generally there's very few if any international flights um, so mainly there's a few regional flights at the time of recording this video uh, it's not possible to travel to Victoria or Queensland at the moment so most flights are going to be just within New South Wales um, but that's gonna be interesting and then when we're all flying again um, as I say I love to travel and go to other cities so I will be covering public transport in other parts of the world um, I often go to Singapore I'm planning to go to Japan as you can probably work out from my accent I'm originally from the UK so there's going to be trips back to London where I'll be covering what's going on in London so I'm looking forward to that so definitely air transport will feature as well and um, what have we got another Waratah behind me I'm going to cover road transport a little bit as well so partly because of the bus services um, and also because um, Sydney actually has got quite a lot happening with road transport I actually feel some people might disagree with me with this but I actually feel that um, Sydney has quite a balanced uh, approach uh, to investing in public transport schemes but also investing in road schemes as well um, so there's some new tunnels going in um, so um, what we'll probably do is my wife loves driving so I'll take a drive with her and I'll film the new tunnels so you get a sense of that as well and um, I forgot light rail as well um, so light rail we've had uh, uh, this year um, the Sydney light rail scheme opening this is between uh, Circular Quay down to Central and then over to Randwick and to Kingsford so I'll be spending some time covering that as well um, we also have the other light rail scheme the Inner West light rail that got extended about uh, five years ago from Lilyfield to Dulwich Hill and one of the things I do want to do on this channel is cover some of the schemes that have happened in the last 10 years um, I actually arrived in Sydney uh, in 2010 so I want to cover quite a few of the things that have happened during that time so including the extension of the Inner West Light Rail but also the extension of Sydney Trains uh, services from Glenfield to Leppington so we'll take a trip out to Leppington and show you that section as well so other things that have happened in the last 10 years include the Newcastle light rail scheme so I'll cover that as well also a new light rail scheme in Canberra here we are a plane taking off here this looks like a Jetstar probably I'm guessing a 737 just flying overhead okay um, all right and also of course the Waratah trains uh, which has been a major investment in the train services in Sydney so I'll, I'll be uh, hopping on one of those explaining uh, about the Waratah trains and how they came to be a part and actually if you're wondering what Waratah stands for it's the New South Wales flower maybe I'll show you one of those at some point but we'll have to get out into the bush to do that so we'll see what I can do for you for that okay now I'm going to talk a bit about me now so um, as I mentioned earlier I've been living in Sydney for 10 years prior to that I lived in the UK um, actually a really potted history of my life was I was actually born in Dunedin in New Zealand I lived there till I was eight years old and then I moved to uh, England and I lived near Crewe in Cheshire and um, Crewe is as you may or may not know if you live in England or know your transport around the world is a major transport hub it's actually not a particularly big town it's got about 50,000 people but it has a station that's much bigger than it needs to be um, for the local population and that's because it's a major interchange so in my teenage years I spent a lot of uh, Saturday afternoons and weekends at crew station and also evenings in the summer as well and um, that's how I really got into uh, trains I got into, into that and then um, I decided to actually go to university and study transport and I went to Loughborough University uh, and studied transport management and planning and that led me to getting a job at London Transport um, actually while I was doing that degree I had a year in industry a bit like an apprenticeship in a way 
um, with British Rail uh, working on what was then Network South East out of Waterloo, what since become, um, used to be Southwest Trains, I'm not quite sure what they call it now, but anyway, the lines out of Waterloo to places like Basingstoke, Southampton and Portsmouth. So I worked there for a year, that was really, really a lot of fun. Um, and then when I graduated, I ended up working for London Transport Buses. Uh, at that point, the uh, rail system was being privatised and it was in a bit of a mess, so I decided to uh, work with London uh, Transport instead. So I did that for about three or four years, uh, and then I moved to the Jubilee Line. Um, at that time, they, uh, uh, the extension to Canary Wharf and Stratford was, being, uh, was under construction. Um, so I got a great job being the visits manager for that and taking people around uh, the various stations and explaining me the new technology. It was the first line to have platform edge doors in the UK. So really explaining all the technology and the architecture and everything behind that. So that was a really, really fun job. Uh, then the underground also uh, got privatised. There seemed to be an interesting trend going on here. So uh, at that point, I actually left the transport industry and moved into IT, became an IT trainer. Um, and uh, that was a great job actually because um, those jobs got me traveling all around the UK and overseas uh, doing software training so actually I traveled much more when I wasn't working in the transport industry than when I was so that was interesting and then um, as I mentioned 20 beginning of 2010 moved to Sydney Australia and, and I continue to work outside the transport industry but um, it's always been a hobby it's always been there and uh, and that's really what's given me the idea of doing this YouTube channel now, I'm actually already quite successful on YouTube um, running a self-help psychology mental health uh, YouTube channel. So I'll put the link to that down below if you want to check that out. Um, so this is a bit of a fun project, uh, a nice easy thing I can do on a Sunday afternoon and something that gets me out of the house as well. So finally, this channel is for you if you live in Sydney and you want to keep up with what's going on with public transport in Sydney. This channel is also for you if maybe you used to live in Sydney and you don't anymore, maybe you're living in the UK or in Europe and you want to keep in, tra keep in touch with what is going on in Sydney. So I'll definitely be helping you and covering that for you. So you can keep up to date with what's happening in Sydney and also elsewhere in Australia. I'll definitely be doing trips to Brisbane and Melbourne and Adelaide and Perth once we can start travelling again and covering what is happening there as well. So um, I think that's probably enough for now. So um, if you like this video and you like what this channel is all about, please do subscribe and do click the bell notification as well. And leave a comment below. Let me know what you'd like to hear about and I'll do my best to cover those topics in the future. So I'd like to thank you for watching this video and I look forward to sharing more great information in the next video. Bye for now.